Dobro večer. Hvala vam što ste došli na 35. digitalizujem evo događaj koji organizujemo sa našim prijateljima Nikšićkim pivom. Veliko mi je zadovoljstvo što ovaj put mogu da vam predstavim Meta Lamberta, community developera u Mijenderbagu, strasvenog putnika, ljubitelja kafe i čoveka sa sjajnom pričom koju će ovaj put moći da podijeli s vama. And now I will switch to English because the rest of this talk will be in English, so please, Matt, welcome. Um, yeah, uh, as she introduced, um, I'm Matt. Um, I've lived in Pogorica for about two years now. Um, me and my family, this is my wife Nicole and our two boys, Elias and Cohen. Um, and then this is our visit Madison with our adventurer Elias. So we've lived here for about two years now. Um, yeah, enjoying Montenegro, enjoying the people and the culture and getting to know the country here a little better. So. Okay, so as I heard, your littlest one is born in Podgorica here? Yeah, so on the Podgoricani. <laughs> yeah, so. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so let's start with the title. Yeah. Why a world citizen? Why the title and what is for you a world citizen? How do you become one? Okay, so I'll give you two stories. Mm -hmm. um, Vanya sent me a message late one night when I was on vacation um, about speaking here. And he wanted me to talk about expat life and things such as that. And so uh, I really wasn't sure. Um, what, he said I needed a title, so mm -hmm. I wasn't sure what. World Citizen popped into my mind, and so that was it. Mm -hmm. um, after that, I started thinking about it a little bit more. Um, and just thinking about being an expat, uh, becoming a world citizen, uh, it just, okay, I'm, I'm American by birth, mm -hmm. but I've traveled throughout the US, I've traveled throughout the world. Uh, I don't wanna just be an American, mm -hmm. you know? I wanna feel connected to the people I'm around. I wanna be a citizen of the place that I'm living, of the place that I'm residing. So um, there's, a, there's an old text uh, where this people, was they were displaced from their country. Mm -hmm. And so one of, their, one of their, their speakers came to him and said, this is what you're supposed to do. You've been resisting becoming a part of the area that you're in for so long because of your identity as a people. He said, it's time that you settle in that land. It's time that you invest in the, the people that are around you, plant the fields, raise your children, be a part of that area. And so I just kind of take that to heart. I want to, I want to be a part of Podgorica, I want to be a part of Montenegro, I want to be a part of the, the Balkans. So. so do you like living here? Why Montenegro? Why Montenegro? Um, that's a good question. Um, so in 2000, well, in university, as we were talking earlier, uh, I first learned about Montenegro as a, a republic of, um, Yugoslavia at the time. Um, I had a professor that just, he loved Yugoslavia, loved the history here, and so he would always talk about it, and we, we discussed it. Um, but then is when I graduated school and I got married, my wife and I were looking at living abroad somewhere. We have a, we have a special a place in our heart for China because that's where we met, that's our, our love story, if you will. Um, and so we ended up spending a year there as we came back, we decided, hey, let's, let's go again. And a friend of ours brought Montenegro back to us. And I came in 2011, visited, saw some potential here from a business side. I saw the, just the beauty of the country, um, met some great people. And oh, so your experiences with Montenegro were right from the start? Yeah, yeah, they were, they were, they were good. We, um, I, I don't remember one bad experience from, I came in 2011 and then 2012, and I don't remember a bad experience throughout that time, so. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> so you started the business here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Meanderbag. Yeah. So why Meanderbag? Why the name, and was it hard starting the business here? Yeah, so we started, uh, the, the business we actually started is what we would refer to as a holding company. 
Um, and so we could start smaller ventures out of out of that. Um, things that would do good, do impact the local economy well. Um, Meanderbug is part of that. That's kind of our first uh, first starting point. Um, so we we started with Meanderbug. Uh, we bounced around on the name quite a bit. Um, wanted to find something that was just articulated what we were doing here, but also could expand outside of the Balkans. And so meander being um, off the beaten path, you know, kind of, you kind of wander around, but you wander around with some intent and purpose. So coming here with some intent and purpose, and then bug is just the, the travel bug, the, you Which know, you yeah, that we all have. We're, <laughs> we're constantly looking for places to go, new, new places to, to experience, new people to meet, so. So is from, uh, from a perspective of a co-founder of a business here, mm -hmm. is starting a business in Montenegro different from the U.S. and other places you have been? Do you have any experiences with that? Uh, unfortunately, I can't really speak about the the process from the U.S. Uh, I haven't been involved in the full process that on that side. My guess, um, and actually, I could pose this question to others here, um, so I could pose it to him. But I, my guess is that it is a bit more difficult uh, than what we experience in the U.S., uh, but that's just a guess. So. so can you tell us more about your startup? What is your goal? Who is your target market? And what is, what is your business model? We introduce you as a startup that promotes sustainable tourism in yeah. South Europe, and it's something I think the whole region can benefit from. Mm -hmm. So what is it that you want long term and how do you plan to achieve it? Long term. So when uh, when I first told my parents that I was moving to Montenegro, <laughs> the, the response was Africa. Oh. Um, and I think the second response was South America. Uh, so people don't know about it? Uh, people in the US do not know about Montenegro. Not very well, not very well. So I'd say probably generally people don't know. And I would say, even parts of Western Europe, people don't know. Which is a shame. Montenegro. Um, so we started with that kind of mindset of, okay, people don't know about this country. It's a beautiful country. People need to come here. People need to experience it. Um, and so that's kind of the, the travel side of it. We, we wanted to draw attention to Montenegro, to the Balkans really as a whole. Um, the sadder story I think, to me is that when you mentioned Balkans, in the U.S., images of war come up. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's what our media gave to us, um, and so our, you know, our idea, our goal is to say, no, that's not what this area is about. This area is, has so much to offer the people, um, so much to offer the traveler, the you know, people wanting to to come through here. So that's kind of our starting point. Are those the preconceptions your friends and family had when they realized where Montenegro actually is? Yeah, yeah, they didn't. Um, they didn't understand what the situation is here now. You know, they don't. Um, and I wouldn't say I can't speak broadly on that, uh, but I know personal experiences when I talk to friends and family. That's those are the reactions I got. Not I, and I still get it. I get emails that say, "Stay safe." Okay. You know, okay. I, I don't know what that means. You know, it's like saying someone's getting on an airplane. Well, good luck. You know, like safe flight. yeah, safe flight. I'll try. Okay. You know? So, um, so well, yeah, we wanted to help change that. We even have introduced the the hashtag in our social media promotions, New Balkans, because we want people to have a new idea of what the Balkans are about. We don't. We we want to push aside that old thinking. Okay, that's great. So. And what is your business model when it's done? Um, it's been growing. Here's yeah, here's Meanderbug, the uh, homepage that you come to. Um, our, the business model, so we started out coming um, kind of with a content marketing, um, advertising uh, model. Like we want to promote, we want to promote services, we want to promote restaurants, we want to promote hotels. That uh, that we believe in, like that are quality experiences that people should should try. Uh, that in the first year, year and a half, wasn't as successful as we had hoped. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's a maybe 
there's a growing understanding of what that actually means um, okay. as far as content marketing goes. Uh, but we, so recently we're kind of transitioning to, alongside of that, uh, introduce a booking model. Um, so taking those experiences that we've enjoyed, that are quality experiences, locals that we trust, mm -hmm. locals that we have good relationships with, um, that are quality businesses, and promoting their experiences on our site. And so just kind of connecting the traveler into the experiences that we believe they want to have. So the thing you focused on in the past is creating quality content mm -hmm. about people, the atmosphere, the places, something travelers usually don't see coming here. Mm -hmm. And did you did, did that garner attention you wanted? Are people connecting with the stories? Do they react to it? Yeah, we um, people are reacting to it. People are. It, it's the. It's the. People are, are having their eyes open, I guess, you know, like they're seeing for the first time, oh, the, this is the experience you can have here. Um, and so we tell the stories. People, to, to me, people connect with stories. They connect with the narrative. Mm -hmm. And so when you start writing and handing people that narrative, um, they understand more than if you give them maybe a list of facts or a list of statistics or something, you know, that they, yeah. they can put themselves in the story. That's the thing, in your Twitter bio, you say you're a storyteller, mm -hmm. and that's what you work on. Yeah. Do you think that we as a country lack storytelling in our promotional activities when it comes to tourism? I hadn't seen a whole lot of it. I think the situation is changing. Mm -hmm. um, actually, in some of my conversations with the National Tourism Board, uh, is they're trying to kind of move in that direction. Um, and. and they're trying to develop that side of their advertising, of their promotion, is adding stories that fit, you know, the, the pictures that they're presenting. So okay. telling, the, telling the story of Lolchen mm -hmm. um, and telling the story of Setinye in, in these unique places, um, you know, that people don't know about. Yes. I, did, I didn't know about until I, I came here and started reading and started talking to people and visiting them. So. Do you think that storytelling is generally the way to approach people instead, like you said, instead of mm -hmm. just pointing out the facts, telling something more, something that people can relate to? Yeah, yeah I think right now it is. Um, uh, I think things change. There's an ebb and flow of, of how we advertise, how we do things, um, how we receive messages as people. But I think right now that, uh, especially when it's, um, cast myself as the millennial generation, mm -hmm. um, we connect very well with stories. We connect, we, like I said, we want to put ourselves into a story. Um, and I think that's, that seems to be a general mentality of, of most is that if, if they can connect, if they can put themselves as a character in the story. That helps. Yeah, it helps. It, it, it creates this bond with the location. It creates a bond with the setting, a bond with the people that they don't even know yet. Okay. So, so besides being a co-founder, mm -hmm. you're also Meander Bugs community hipster. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, that's that's kind of a joke that Jennifer and I have of uh, being the hipster. But yeah, the community, uh, the community manager, community hipster. I want to, um, I want to create, uh, I want to create the community, help draw people together around Meander Bugs, around Meander Bugs purpose, focus, uh, goals. Um, and find, I, I want to present our message in a way that connects with the, an audience. Um, and people say, yeah, I want to be a part of that. I, I like what they're doing. Um, I like that they're trying to go and not just grow a business, but grow, help an economy, help a people. Um, so I want to present that message in a way where it brings people together. So one way, is that connection? to the volunteerism you're mentioning. Mm -hmm. What is that concept? Do you have that on your website? So volunteerism mm -hmm. is the idea of, I'm going to travel to a place for the sole purpose of giving myself to that place. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to travel to Podgorica mm -hmm. so I can walk along the banks of Podgorica and help clean out the Maracha River. Um, and do good and invest in a place 
that is going to help it in the long run. Um, you know, that's that's kind of the aspect of volunteerism we want to promote. We want to promote kind of giving ourselves, sacrificing ourselves um, for for not just the place, but the people, um, for those around us. Um, Do you have people responding to that? Um, are you sharing their stories? Yeah, we um, we are. We're in, what's cool is that we're we're finding that those stories are already being told here. Um, there's a, a lady that we work that we've done some work with. Um, she runs an organization called Nasha Axia. Yeah. And she's you know she's trying to Patricia, right? Patricia, yes. yes. Um, she's trying to you know she's trying to do cleanups and she's trying she's doing this uh, open library. Yeah, small th local open libraries. library throughout the city. Um, I, I'm really intrigued by this idea. I've never thought of something like that. Um, so I'm really interested. I hope it goes well. I hope it goes long term. You know. But partnering, finding people like this, and you know, creating a, a synergy, being a citizen <laughs> alongside yes. of her, cleaning up, um, investing in in the city that we find ourselves. So basically, this is something you want to share with your with visitors of Montenegro, but also with people in Montenegro, yeah. citizens of Montenegro too. Yeah, we want to connect. Um, part of being a community manager is connecting people um, in the possible example in the US connecting people in Montenegro you know so people from the US are coming here let's connect them with the locals so they're they're getting that local experience and that true local flavor they're not just they're not just going and sitting in a foreign constructed building um, and they have no connection to the people here and they say I mean they they'll come here and they'll see the Bay of Kotor but they'll never experience or understand Montenegro any more than what they did so we want to we want to create that connection. That's great. So the other thing when we talked earlier, you told me that you're also trying to connect tourist organizations in Montenegro mm -hmm. and to be a to play the role of community manager also there. Can you tell us about your work with them? Um, sometimes I feel like I'm hitting a wall. Okay. Um, no, I think it's just something that's not is. You have some, some areas that have been very successful um, in tourism. And so there's an understanding that they haven't made and, mm -hmm. and they're good. Um, you have some people that, that really want to, they want help or they want some connection. They want some, some cooperation. Um, and then others that are kind of indifferent. And so trying to bring importance and let, letting them see that there's value in all of us working together and not just trying to do our own thing and trying to you know, trying to build something over here and build something small over here. But let's build something big together. You know, for example, connecting different cities and offering the tours that can bring an experience of maybe yeah. being in the morning along the seaside and yeah. mountains. Yeah, a couple of hours later. Yeah, Do you think that is something. Are you, that is that something you work on? Yeah, that's. I mean, that's. It's. The example you and I were talking about is that, you know, if I could have an early morning or early lunch on the sea, you know, at Konobash uh, Square, yeah, yes. uh, and then we love here to know yeah, yeah, and then head somewhere in the mountains and have a sunset dinner in the mountains. Who wouldn't want that experience? I, I don't. I don't know the person who says no. No, thank you to that. Um, and that's the spin on cooperation and storytelling you were talking about earlier. Yeah. Yeah, like if you if you can bring the people from Herzegovina together and you can bring the people from Nikšić or somewhere else together, I don't know, Rojayer, you know, you, you bring these different groups together and say, let's build something. Let's let's think how do we get people from the coast up to Rojayer? Let's how do we get people to Bielopoye or Kalashin? And then how do we get them back? And what kind of experiences can we offer them? And how can we use the local resources that are already available? Yes. The local tour groups that are already available. You know, I, I think you create you create meaningful experiences for people yes. that they walk away with wanting to come back, want to tell their friends about. Yeah. They remember and share. Yeah, they share. And that's that's the thing about storytelling is people share stories. Right? Yeah. I don't go. I, uh, maybe a couple of my friends I do this, but I rarely do. I ever go to someone, a friend of mine. And tell them a list of 
statistics. Yeah. You know, sit down for a coffee. You know, 30% of Americans do this, 40% do that. I don't do that. You know, I don't know anyone who does. Um, so let's share stories. Yeah. So one part of your model is to invite people yeah. to share their stories. And that also goes for everyone here. If you have a story, you can share it with them. Yeah. So how many people have responded to this? Do you see people, Montenegrin people or foreigners? How do they react? Um, I have to ask Jennifer on that because Jennifer, one of my colleagues, she's the one that's kind of headed that up. Um, I don't. I don't think we've had anybody respond yet. their stories yeah. on our site. Yeah. So beyond the team that you see here, we can have content being created by people who've also enjoyed yeah. the Balkans and had experiences yeah. here they want to share. We did have a, a, a girl from Australia that stayed with us for a while mm -hmm. that we got connected with. Um, and she took the Eurovelo 8 that goes up the Adriatic coast wow. over to Spain, I believe. And um, so she wrote for us. Uh, her experience of taking the, the bike path up through Croatia and Slovenia. Okay. So. so this is a great opportunity for us as native hearers to also share and write. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a full contact list on there, so yeah. you get in touch easy. with us. And yeah, we'd love to hear the stories. Um, we took a recent trip to Herzegovina, and all the information I had came from a friend of mine who was from there. And so we want, you know, she was telling me great stories about the restaurants and places to go and do. And so. I read that post. I, I, I like it. So, Everything is true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so well, now uh, to the most interesting subject, the coffee. Absolutely. As a self-proclaimed coffee <laughs> enthusiast, how do you like coffee in Montenegro? Um, some will call me a coffee snob. Oh, so, why? I don't like huh? <laughs> I didn't say that, Natasha. Uh, it was different for me. I mean, coffee here. Really? Why? Well, the, it's just it's prepared differently. There's uh, the coffee from, I'm going to geek out here for a minute. Okay. The, the coffee from the, the, the production process, everything is, is different than what I'm used to um, and what I actually look for. Okay. So, and this is actually a place just outside of Herzegnovi. It's uh, a local artisan roaster. It was deliberate. Yeah. <laughs> She's putting me on the spot. <laughs> um, so the question I have is, is the whole experience, the ritual of drinking coffee different here from the US? Yeah, we don't have, um, yes and no. Um, so I lived in Oregon for a while, mm -hmm. um, or Washington State, mm -hmm. just outside of Oregon. Um, and I'd say the coffee, the coffee culture there, atmosphere there is very similar to here, mm -hmm. as we'll go sit at a cafe for a couple hours, and we'll have just relax. Some, yeah, we'll relax. The day kind of slows down and stops at that point. And business, studying, everything is done in the coffee shop. Mm -hmm. You know, so I did. I was working on my master's in Oregon, and that's, um, you know, that's where I did all my studying. It was either a, a pub or the coffee shop. So, what we have here is that some people think this to be. Um, too much indulgement on our part mm -hmm. and waste of time. But on the other hand, some people believe it's a core of a tight and supportive community. Mm -hmm. As a perspective of community developer, what mm -hmm. do you think? I think it can be very important for community. I think it also can be a waste of time. Okay. Um, so everything in moderation, right? Yeah, uh, well, moderation, what is that? Um, <laughs> you know. But no, I think you know, there's there there comes a point where you begin wasting a day. Um, it's you know, it's unfortunate that I've, I've talked to people and when I ask them, what, what, what do you do, what, what, what do you like to do? And they say, I don't know, I just only know to drink coffee. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's like, that's sad, you know, like that I, I, life is so much more. <laughs> it's, um, you know, so like it can be a waste of time. Um, it, I think it can be a community killer. Mm -hmm. In that sense, um, if we're sitting in a coffee shop and we're all, we all have our phones out because we've talked about everything and we're all on our phones not doing anything, then we've, we've killed community in that sense. Yeah. So. 
but if it fosters communication and reconnection, then it yeah. can be. Yeah, I think so. I think like, so I, I have no problem spending two or three hours in a coffee shop with somebody. I have no problems with that because there's, there's times when you can sit and you can, you can talk, you can connect, you can, you, you can get to know each other over that two to three hours. Um, but like I said, if, if it becomes yeah, that point where, so much that, no. yeah, so. Just uh, something interesting. We are organizing the first coffee fair. I don't know if you heard. It will be here in Podgorica. Okay. We will all be able to taste different coffee, different types okay. of coffee. So. Who's organizing this? Uh, we'll put you on the spot. To be honest, I don't know. I know it will be from 29th to 31st of May. Okay. At the main square, so. I guess we'll see each other there. Well, we will. You know, there's also this really cool conference happening about that time. Okay. I don't know, I know if you've heard about it. I know, but this is before. You, okay. We have a day before. Okay. I talked about it. And now that you mentioned it, I think it's... Oh, no, we have something first, something first. Uh, this is something I found on your profile, Facebook yeah. profile. Can you tell me more about it? Yeah, so we took a trip to Zagreb, uh, my family. In, uh, around Christmas fair. Um, Zagreb, uh, it, we started seeing these signs all over, I heart Zagreb. Um, and so I started taking some taxis everywhere and I just started asking people, what, what is this, why is this everywhere? What is the story behind this? And um, the taxi drivers just say, it's just the spirit of the people here. The spirit of the people is they love their city, they love Zagreb, they love they love everything about it, the culture, everything. Um, and so they would, they just took a lot of pride in their, in their city. Um, and so the month that we were promoting Croatia, um, this was my banner, I think, or without the Pogreeds, of course. <laughs> um, but then I put this up and this person will remain nameless, but somebody- We'll just look at her. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody sent me a message or posted on the picture. Why? Why Zagreb? You know, what about Podgorica? Uh, so I, when we came to Montenegro, month about Mont uh, Montenegro, I decided that I would try to alter this picture in five seconds, <laughs> and you could tell. Um, but it also represented something more for me um, when we first moved here. I asked people about the spirit of Pogreeds. So what is Pogreeds about? And I was very sad by the answers. Uh, Pogreeds, according to locals, is a soulless city. It's a spiritless city. And that frustrates me, honestly. That just, like, because it's, it's not. It's not a soulless city. I guess you can go to local spirit. Who? Well, local. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe I'm missing the... It, that's the younger generation I'm talking to, and they will be the real locals soon. Okay. So, mm. so, so this is a call for a new kind of spirit and this, engagement. Yeah, I, I, I would love to see um, my for me my idea, and I've been working on this a little bit, and um, my friend Jean has been helping me with it, um, trying to get people together to create some, some something where people express their love for their city. Um, I, I've been talking with the, the Obstina and the, the mm -hmm. tourism board, or Jana has, I'll say, because I can't, um, and trying to figure out how to, how to go about this. How can we do this? Um, and so we're, we're working on a plan right now. Okay. Um, I'm open to ideas okay. and suggestions. So if you're from, if you're from Polgarica and you want to talk about <laughs> it, let's talk about it. Let's figure out how do we get this going? How do we get this moving? Let's okay, create, create a story. We will definitely be in touch. Okay. So now to the, the most awesome conference. Yeah. You have been chosen as Spargot means official blogger. The okay. first one blogging in English. Okay. So why did you apply? Um, and what do you expect from Spargot Me? What do I expect from Spargot Me? First, why did you apply? Why did I apply? Mm -hmm. um, so I... Last year, I had no idea about Spark.me. And then last year, I had some friends talk to me about it. 
um, said that it was a great conference, had to go, innovators, business, had to go. Um, I said, those are the people I want to meet. Um, those are community builders usually. Um, mm -hmm. and so those are the people I'm interested in. Um, and so as I saw this being promoted this year, I signed up uh, to go. And then as I was searching around on the website, it was the same time I was starting my blog, uh, Discourse Project. And I thought, wow, this is great. This is something that's inspiring. Mm -hmm. It's innovative. Um, it promotes change um, and thinking, change in business, change in how do we do things. And so um, I just I wanted to be a part of it from that aspect, that angle. I wanted to sit. I wanted to, I wanted to be engaged in that way, you know, like where I'm going to write about this intentionally and think about it um, on a deeper level. So it fits the theme of your blog. Yeah. Can you tell us more about it? Yeah. It's a discourse project. Yeah. So I read your stories. I love them. Maybe even share why do you like you talk with people, share their experiences. Are there any stories that kind of stand out from others, et cetera? Um, yeah. Uh, so I started the website um, just kind of as an outlet is one. Um, because uh, again, I was meeting, I was meeting a group of people. I kept coming across them that, uh, their, their only answer was to leave Montenegro. Like if they wanted any kind of hope, any kind of future, they said, we have to leave. We have to get out of Montenegro. Um, and it was probably about six months to eight months into living here. Uh, they, I started meeting a second group of people that were telling a different story. Um, so I was meeting a, a friend of mine, Elia, who started uh, Writers.me. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he wanted to create a brand that saw tourism, saw promotion just differently. Um, and so I wanted to tell his story. And I started meeting, um, I met Danilo who, with the Transformers, yes. um, trying to tell something different there. Um, so I, I just uh, I thought to myself, um, these stories need to be told on a bigger level. They need to, they, it creates an energy that people can take pride in. Um, I'm reminded of a story during World War II in a concentration camp of, um, the guy's name slips my mind, but he talks about how the soldiers, the Nazi soldiers in the camp, uh, their whole goal in the camp was to strip the people of purpose, strip them of hope. And they would do that by, they would say, okay, I want you to move this, this pile of, of stones to that side of the camp. So they would spend all morning doing that. And then afterwards, they would say, okay, now move them back. And they did that every day. And he said, as they started doing this, he saw the wear and tear on the bodies. He saw people they had no purpose their only purpose was to move a rock um, and so he came up and he said we're gonna do this differently okay your job today is to move rocks and he would tell them your responsibility is to move rock take ownership your job today is to go get food for the camp so for the whole room that's all you do is you're gonna get food um, your job is to clean the, the bathrooms and he said, it's amazing. People took pride and joy in cleaning a bathroom, like these nasty, dirty bathrooms. Because they had a purpose. They had a purpose. And people started, he said, you could notice a change in their demeanor, a change in their way of life. They knew they were prisoners. They knew that they might die the next day, but they had a purpose for that day. And they were contributing. They were contributing to a community. Yeah. So that's, so for me, I wanted to start telling these stories of, people that are contributing to the community they realize that the situation is not the best mm -hmm. but they're contributing to a community in a way that brings purpose and hope and it inspires others to do the same so that's that's my goal help tell their stories well reading your blog i think you're succeeding and you. i know somebody <clears throat> also a little bird told me that you're inspiring people yourself so if you notice that our menus and cafes and restaurants are being better translated, <laughs> you can blame this guy because he spent his time and energy helping businesses 
to improve their offering, yeah. even by helping with the translations. So thank you. That's a team effort. That's um, we have some people, some wonderful people helping us and uh, doing that work and doing that side, so I can tell better stories yeah. there. So <laughs> they they take any kind of credit there. Yeah, but it, it's a it's a small thing that can make a lot of impact. Yeah. So that's. Yeah, we hope so. We, I mean, we we've noticed that tourism is, is built around trust, trusting the people, trusting that you're working with, trusting the people that, um, uh, you know, the businesses, the experiences, um, and so correcting one little mistake on a menu helps. Yeah. Um, so, and it's been the difference of some of our orders in the past. So. <laughs> <laughs> so you get really what you. Mentals. Yeah. Yeah. Thing you order. Yeah. 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 Oh. I mean, a poison salad just doesn't sound good <laughs> to me. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> so. Okay. So, I think we are going to give you a chance to pose a couple of questions for Matt. I have a question. All oh, right. Of course. <laughs> Matt, you travel a lot. You've been to Slovenia, Croatia, Macedonia. You've even been to Slovenia in our neighborhood. So I have a question. You live here. I know that you love Montenegro, you love yes. Costa Rica, but are there any things that you really find unique in Montenegro, which the rest of home Yugoslavia countries mm -hmm. do not have? Like, for example, you showed us a sign mm -hmm. thing from Zagreb coming. Mm -hmm. So are there any potential things in Kremlin Stamina, Montenegro by itself, um, Do you find that foreigner? Hmm. Let me just repeat for the live stream. So the question was, as a person who has traveled to mm -hmm. former Yugoslavia countries, and we know that you love Montenegro, mm -hmm. is there still something unique that differentiates Montenegro from, yeah. from other former Yugoslavia countries? Yeah. Um, I haven't spent a whole lot of time in the other countries. Um, so finding anything of real depth and substance has been difficult. Um, I would say the time that I've spent in um, some of the larger cities, Podgorica has been a lot more hospitable to me and my family. And so I won't, I won't make a blanket statement because I don't know um, Serbian culture, Croatian culture, Slovenian, but that's been my experience. Um, and, and I think that has a lot to do with uh, just the, the history, the, the clan system, clan society that, that the people here come out of um you know people are closely connected and it's kind of like once you're in you're in you know like so it's, you're one of us now. yeah yeah i hope so i know my i know my youngest son is because yeah. he gets called the you are, you are. Guard, so. Yes. <laughs> so thank you yeah. thank you any other questions i have a question mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned one to meet two different groups of people in montenegro mm -hmm. uh, let's say that one was Optimistic more than another mm -hmm. about business in Montenegro and creating content here. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but do you think that's the big difference between those groups? Uh, uh, the, go yes, ahead. Let me repeat. Yeah. So he's referencing the thing that he said about meeting two different types of people in Montenegro, mm -hmm. one more optimistic than the other about starting a business here. Mm -hmm. And what is the main difference between those two groups? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'd say. The biggest difference that I run into is mindset. Um, people, people are that are optimistic. The more optimistic group um, are not so focused on the problems um, that face them or the challenges that face them. They're aware of them, but they're not focused on them. Um, the the group that generally is more down on the country. Uh, the topics of conversation stay around the challenges that the country faces. Um, and when you try to try to point outside of that, it, the conversation always comes back to those challenges. So I'd say that's probably the, the biggest difference that I see is the mindset. If we stay focused on the problem, on just the problem, and never look outside it to a solution, we, we'll never move anywhere. Um, we'll, never, we'll never get outside of it. So. And we face we face problems and challenges across the world. It's just that they come in different sizes, and different styles. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other? Thank you. 
Yeah. Talking about solving problems, mm -hmm. so uh, I was wondering, uh, as a stackover, uh, what would be the biggest lesson you learned so far? So the question we have is about solving problems, mm -hmm. and the lesson you learn about solving problems as a starter. No, no, what would be the the biggest lesson? The biggest this lesson, would be the lesson. You, you learned as a starter. The biggest lesson you learned as a starter. Never stop learning. <laughs> that's I mean that's you know like we we kind of jumped into an endeavor that didn't have a whole lot of background knowledge in. So the whole process has been growth and learning. Um, if I would have, if I would have approached this about two or three months ago and said, "Okay, I've learned all I need to learn. I have my system down. I have my schedule down. I'm going to go." I, I, it wouldn't be good. <laughs> you know, if we had done that six months ago, it wouldn't have been good. So I'd say the biggest thing is never stop learning. Um, be confident in what you're doing, but um, but also be humble. Be, be willing to learn more and be willing to listen. Um, I think that I think that's the, the biggest lesson I'm learning right now. And I think it's not just as a startup, but it's just in general in life and as you know, someone who hopes to be a leader. Like that's you know, leaders learn. So thank you. So if you could change anything, uh, <laughs> What would you do differently now if you had to do it all over again? If you had to move here and start the business and if you could go back in time, what would you do differently? So the question is if he could go back in time and change anything about coming here, starting a business, what would you change? That's a good question. I feel like there's a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I think just in general, living here, uh, really making an effort of, of learning more language early and learning to connect with people better um, early on, uh, I think would, would help understand the processes, understand the business, how to start a business in a foreign country a little better. Um, so I think that would, that's been important to me. Um, something I'm really trying to work on now to try to correct. Uh, I think market research is huge. Um, you know, it's one thing to to pull. You know, like we we started out pulling some friends, but really kind of broadening that a little bit and um, getting getting a better understanding of getting a better understanding of what do people understand as far as content marketing and advertising here. You know, to where maybe we would have pushed booking a little earlier or done some things different. I think these are healthy lessons. So this basically ties in with what you told me before about the usability testing you're doing mm -hmm. for the new model you have. Yeah. So what are you doing with that specifically on your site now? How do you do the market research for your new model? Um, I mean, a lot of it goes through, uh, friend, like right now as, as we're just starting, uh, friends that are going to be users. So we know people that are traveling here, so we want to put something that and say, how do you work through this? Or can you work through it? Is it functioning? Um, that's been the, the starting point as it grows that I'm, I'm thinking that market research will probably expand a little bit more. And it's a continuous process. Yeah. 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 So. OK. Do we have more questions? How have you been able to connect with various businesses throughout the area? And have you met a lot of businesses with people trying to join the business community rather than having their own isolated business? So have you been able to connect with other businesses, local businesses in the area? And have you met resistance with people wanting to do their own business instead of joining the community? Was that it? Is that, are you you talking about like businesses in the same realm or the same I mean, like just um, general same thing with tourism trying to go from the seaside to the mountains trying to connect mm -hmm. larger areas how have you been able to make those connections and and was it difficult for you to do that um i think generally most people have been open um in in doing that uh so <laughs> it's kind of the community manager social media manager versus stalker kind of mentality <laughs> um 
my wife laughs at me because I find people on Facebook that like I really want to connect with or I hear some from somebody and I, I flat out send them a message um, and try to connect with them. Um, and that's not been hard to locate people here. Um, it's not hard in this city to find someone who knows someone um, and, you know, it, and get connected in that way. So that's the, the beauty of a small city is that people are connected and people if you're open, people are generally open. So, you know, so it's been, it's been easy as far as the city to city connection, that's proven a little bit more logistically challenging. Um, but I think the, the openness is there, especially with the North part of this country, which I think, I think offers so much for the future of Montenegro for tourism and development. Uh, it, I'm going to go off on a tangent here, by the way. It's, it, it blows my mind that more hasn't been done already um, to really see the North succeed um, in this country. So, and when I say North, Moikabats, Bielopoy, Rojay, Plav, these cities are beautiful and they're surrounded by amazing mountains and lakes. Nobody's doing anything with them, or few are doing stuff with them. We are so, trying to Yeah, we are trying. trying. What do you think? What's what's the way of how to make it for the north in terms of I'm investigating that right now. Like I, I think right now, like you finding the people that are that are doing stuff here and, and seeing what's worked, uh, what's worked around the central, what's worked around the coast in some ways, mm -hmm. and then is there a way to implement some of that into the north? I mean, obviously, you're not going to build a huge luxur luxurious resort up there, uh, but um, is there a way to take a, a, a Moikovats, take a local town, build experiences around that local town, get the locals invested in it and say, yeah, I want to bring people here. I want to bring a group of 10 here, you know, and stay for the week. That's some of the best hiking, by the way, in the Yellow Seats. So you, you mentioned experiences yeah. in the north and some of these uh, small uh, towns. Yeah. Can you um, give an example of uh, an experience that uh, Westerners or people not from here might enjoy and actually come to experience in those places? Yeah, I'll, uh, an example of something. That, oh, sorry. Just repeat it. So when it comes to experiences from these little towns in the north, can you give an example of an experience <coughs> foreigners mm -hmm. visiting would enjoy in that place? Yeah. Um, one experience that's already happening, um, this is not in the north, but it's in near Satinia, is uh, there's, a, there's a guy that's getting people off cruise ships, taking him to his farmhouse, vineyard, I don't know what it is exactly, but he's teaching them about Montenegrin culture, he's teaching them about winemaking, he's, you know, I, I don't know what else he's doing, but people are paying him for this. For the day experience mm -hmm. and they were helping him work his vineyard and do work around his house because it teaches them something about your culture it's a general experience yeah yeah so and so that's one um I'm, I'm sure that stuff happens in the north or you could get it happening um norwegians are coming here to do cross-country skiing mm -hmm. um people are doing bike riding um mountain biking in the north um, people are already coming for these smaller, these experiences, if you kind of organize it, I think a little bit more than create something. So there is a lot of potential. People just don't know about it. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know about it. These are just the, the few things that I've seen so far. So. Masha? I was wondering, um, besides coffee, what is it that you miss most about the U.S.? And the second question is optional, um, and it's what kind of relationship would you want your kids to have with Montenegro and the U.S. when they get a little bit So we have two questions. The first one is besides... <laughs> I don't know. I, kinda, I like it, though. I so the first question is, aside from coffee, what, what do you miss most from the U.S.? And the second one, Optional one is which kind, what kind of relationship would you like your children to have with Montenegro? Yeah. Uh, and the US. And the US. And the US. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
things I miss about the U.S. Uh, family, you know, there's there's some family I miss from the U.S. Outside of that, I, you know, there's nothing I really crave. Anything I really say, oh, I miss that. Maybe guacamole, avocado. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There's, you know, Tex-Mex. There you go. Uh, you know, we were talking about Austin earlier, right? Yes. Yeah, so. So, no, I mean, there's, you know, outside of family, I, I can't think of just pinpoint one thing that I thought, man, I really, I crave that, I miss that, you know. Uh, for, the, second the second question, what kind of, let me, what kind of relationship do I want my kids to have right. with Montenegro in the U.S.? Right. Um, I want them to have pride in both. Um, so especially, you know, like, they're both growing up here right now. Um, so I want them to take a pride in that, take a pride in Montenegro. Um, if we spend any kind of time in the U.S., I want them to, to be proud of that time that they have in the U.S. Uh, you shouldn't be sorry for anywhere that you're from. You know, you shouldn't, you know, I find myself in sometimes precarious positions um, being from the U.S. here, uh, especially if it goes politics. Uh, but, I, you know, like, I, I'm not ashamed of where I'm from. Not, I'm not sad about that. It doesn't. So I want them to have a pride in that. I want them to experience uh, the youngest. I want them to, to experience the pride of being Pogrichan. You know, like to, to to love, to develop a love for that. Do you think that is a problem that people here here don't feel that pride that they're from here? Or yeah, a couple of my friends um, separately said the same thing. They said, uh, and you guys can help me with this if, if you think they're wrong. Uh, they said too many times people are too proud of being Montenegrin. They're not proud of Montenegro. And they said that in relationship to how you care for the land, how you know how people care about you know the the quality of life here. But they're they're Montenegrin, you know. And they said they're, they're completely content. People are completely content being Montenegrin, sitting in a cafe. You know, that's not my words. That's you know that's what was told to me by. Like people from here, and so I don't know. Like I don't. I hope that's not the case. Yeah. I, I hope it's not. But time will tell. Okay. Do we have any more questions? <clears throat> okay. So thank you once again for thank sharing you. your story with us. Yeah. Hvala svima vama što ste bili ovdje. Nadam se da ćete nam se pridružiti na našem sljedećem događaju koji će biti organizovan 30. juna, takozvani Social Media Day. I još jednom hvala Nikšničkom pivu, hvala našim sponsorima i partnerima u organizaciji ovog događaja. Hvala vam puno.